Good day everyone and welcome to another episode of our Tax 101 Guide in Income Taxation where we can talk about anything under tax. For today's episode, our topic is employees' fringe benefits. Fringe benefits are any goods, services, or other benefits furnished or granted by an employer in cash or kind in addition to basic salaries. It may be in the form of property, services, cash or cash equivalent to supplement a stated pay for the performance of services. Under the tax code, fringe benefits subject to fringe benefits tax cover only those fringe benefits given or furnished to a managerial or supervisory employee. The regulations do not cover those benefits which are part of taxable compensation income because such incomes are subject to withholding tax on compensation in accordance with Revenue Regulation No. 298 as amended. The term compensation refers to all remuneration for services performed by an employee for his employer under an employer-employee relationship unless specifically excluded by the code. We can identify the following items as compensation income, salaries, wages, emoluments and honoraria, allowances, commissions for transportation, representation, entertainment, and the like, this including director fees if the director is at the same time an employee of the employer or corporation, taxable bonuses and fringe benefits except those which are subject to the fringe benefits tax under Section 33 of the Code, taxable pensions and retirement pay, and other income of a similar nature. The fringe benefit tax is a final tax imposed on the employee withheld by the employer computed at 35% beginning January 1, 2018 or upon the effectivity of train law. On the gross up monetary value or GUMV of the fringe benefit granted by the employer to an employee who holds a managerial or supervisory position. Fringe benefits given to supervisory and managerial employees are taxable and are subject to fringe benefit tax. Being a final tax, the FPT is collected or withheld at source by the employer, meaning at the firm's level rather than at the taxpayer's level to facilitate tax administration. To be able to identify if the fringe benefit of a certain employee is subject to FBT, the Labor Code distinguishes a rank and file employee from a managerial employee. According to the Labor Code, a managerial employee is one who is vested with powers of prerogatives to lay down and execute management policies and or to hire, transfer, suspend, lay off, recall discharge, assign or discipline employees, or to effectively recommend such managerial actions. And all employees not falling within this definition are considered rank and file employees. Now that we've already tackled the necessary theories about fringe benefit tax, let's proceed with the discussion of the filing process of FBT. FPT shall be withheld and paid by the employer on or before the last day of the month following the calendar quarter. Thus, the employer is the one liable to pay the FPT. Here are items of fringe benefits subject to tax. Housing, expense account, vehicle of any kind, household personnel such as maids, drivers, and others, interest on loan at less than market rate to the extent of the difference between the market rate and the actual rate granted, Membership fees, dues, and other expenses borne by the employer for the employee in social and athletic clubs and similar organizations, expenses for foreign travel, holiday and vacation expenses, educational assistance to the employee or his dependents, life or health insurance and other non-life insurance premiums or similar amount in excess of what the law allows. In general, Fringe benefit tax rate is 35% beginning January 1, 2018, or upon the effectivity of train law. However, FPT rate for non-resident aliens not engaged in trade or business is 25%. The computation of the fringe benefits tax is done by first evaluating the value of the benefit granted or determining the monetary value, second, determining the proportion or percentage or the gross monetary factor of the benefit which is subject to the FBT. Third, determining the gross up monetary value of the fringe benefit by dividing the monetary value of the fringe benefit by the gross monetary value factor. And fourth, multiplying the gross top monetary value factor by the FBT rate. It should be noted that prior to January 1, 2018, 
the FBT rate was 32%. Here's a detailed formula for the computation of fringe benefit tax for citizens, resident alien, and non-resident alien engaged in trade or business, the monetary value will be divided by the gross monetary value factor of 65%, which will give the gross up monetary value, which will be then multiplied to the FBT rate of 35%. For non-resident alien not engaged in trade or business, same process will be applied, however, the gross monetary value factor is 75% and the FBT rate is 25%. Here are some rules in the valuation of fringe benefits. If granted in money, the value is in the amount granted. If granted in property and ownership is transferred to the employee, the value is the fair market value of the property. If granted in property but ownership is not transferred to the employee, the value is equal to the depreciation value of the property. The following fringe benefits shall not be subject to basic tax or fringe benefit tax. Number one. Fringe benefits which are authorized and exempted from income tax under any special law, such as contributions required under the SSS law, contributions required under the GSIS law, similar contributions under an existing law, and premiums for group insurance of employees. Number 2. If the grant of fringe benefits to the employee is required by the nature of or necessary to the trade, business, or profession of the employer. Number 3. The minimum benefits, which are benefits of relatively small values provided by the employers to the employee, on top of the basic compensation intended for the general welfare of the employees. Being of relatively small value, the same is not considered taxable compensation. And number 4. If the grant of benefits is for the convenience or advantage of the employer. One of the fringe benefits that are not subject to basic tax and FBT are the minimum benefits. Facilities and privileges such as entertainment, medical services, or so-called courtesy discounts on purchases, otherwise known as de minimis benefits furnished or offered by an employer to his employees, are not considered compensation subject to income tax and consequently to withholding tax. If such facilities or privileges are of as means of promoting the health, goodwill, contentment, or efficiency of relatively small value and are offered or furnished by the employer merely for his employees. The following shall be considered de minimis benefits not subject to income tax as well as withholding tax on compensation income of both managerial and rank and file employees. Number 1. Monetize and use vacation gift credits of private employees not exceeding 10 days during the year. Payment of monetized and use vacation leave credit exceeding 10 days as well as payment of sick leave regardless of the number of days shall be added to other benefits with the 90,000 pesos ceiling and any amount exceeding the 90,000 pesos ceiling shall be subject to basic and creditable withholding tax and compensation income. Number 2. Monetized value of vacation and sick leave credits paid to government officials and employees. Compared to employees in the private sector, payment of monetized and use vacation and sick leave credits to government officials or employees regardless of the number of these shall be exempt from tax on compensation income. Number 3. Medical cash allowance to dependents of employees not exceeding 1,500 pesos per semester or 250 pesos a month. Number 4. Rice subsidy not more than 2,000 pesos per month or 1 sack or equivalent to 50 kilograms of rice per month. And number 5. Uniforms given to employees by the employer not exceeding 6,000 pesos per annum. Number 6. Actual medical assistance given not exceeding 10,000 pesos per annum such as medical allowance to cover medical and healthcare needs, annual medical or executive checkups, maternity assistance and routine consultations. Number 7. Laundry allowance not exceeding 300 pesos per month. Number 8. Employees Achievement Awards which must be in the form of tangible personal property other than cash or gift certificate with an annual monetary value not exceeding 10,000 pesos under an established written plan which does not discriminate in favor of highly paid employees. An example of these are awards for the length of service or safety achievement. Number 9. Gifts given during Christmas and major anniversary celebrations not exceeding 5,000 pesos per employee per annum. Number 10. Daily meal allowance for overtime work and night or graveyard shift not exceeding 25% of the basic minimum wage on a per-region basis provided such benefit is given on account of overtime work 
or if given to employees on night or graveyard shift. The grant of meal allowance if not for overtime work or night or graveyard shift should be subject to income tax. However, meal allowance and lodging furnished by the employer to the employees are exempt from tax if furnished for the advantage or convenience of the employer. Meal allowance in this particular case should be furnished within the premise of the employer. Number 11. Benefits received by an employee by virtue of a collective bargaining agreement or CBA and productivity incentive scheme provided that the total annual monetary value received from the two items above combined do not exceed 10,000 pesos per employee per taxable year. Thank you for staying with us today and we are looking forward to see you on our next episode. Stay well and don't forget to pay your taxes. Adios!